SpaceX's brush with bankruptcy may be fading as CEO Elon Musk has just revealed a series of new Starship major upgrades recently. Not only that, but the long-awaited Raptor 2 test has also been conducted. Let's find out more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. By the way, if you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell to make sure you never miss any updates from us. It's the best Christmas gift we could ever have. Now let's get back to today's content. Musk once said that the company has plans to boost Raptor's performance by at least 15%, and the number of those engines installed on Starship by 50%. Those updated goals came hand in hand with significant changes to the design and operations of both Starship and its super heavy booster, which at one point was expected to utilize a boost variant of Raptor that would trade thrust vector control or TVC and a wide throttle range for far greater thrust. Enter Raptor 2, a more powerful version of the Raptor engine, helping SpaceX realize its dreams. According to data provided by Musk, each Raptor 1 engine produces 185 metric tons of force. Meanwhile, Raptor 2 just started production and will do 230 plus tons or over half a million pounds of force. I don't know about you, but I'd say this is a great development. SpaceX recently conducted a test of the long-awaited engine on a horizontal test stand. Huge thanks to Adam Cuker for capturing these amazing moments. Just listen to it. I could listen to this all day. Anyway, Elon afterward responded that all Raptor 2 tests going forward. This means that SpaceX will continuously test Raptor 2 in the near future. And I believe it's truly worth the wait. But this is not the first time SpaceX has tested this engine. On its very first static fire in October, it appeared that SpaceX's first finished Raptor 2 prototype has narrowly stolen BE-4's crown. Briefly generating main combustion chamber pressures of 321 bar and as much as 245 tons of thrust. Raptor 2 wasn't so lucky like BE-4, however, because it apparently exploded before completing its first test. While not quite as successful as the first static fire campaign of a full-scale Raptor 1 engine, which survived several tests, the first Raptor 2 prototype's early demise is still a routine part of engine development and is the start of a process that should ultimately produce a super heavy booster with 50% more thrust than the next most powerful rocket ever flown. Musk has said that Raptor 2, or version 2.0, V2.0, is a major improvement in simplification over Raptor 1. It's not all that surprising then that the first Raptor 2 prototype ever completed exploded when SpaceX pushed it to almost 107% of its maximum rated thrust and main chamber pressure during its first test. Though impressive, SpaceX has technically pushed Raptor 1 prototypes further and without failure. Musk later indicated that there was some damage present, but a fairly young Raptor 1 engine still made it all the way up to 330 bar and spent about 10 seconds at chamber pressures above 320 bar without failure during an August 2020 stress test. Still, had the Raptor 2 prototype also made it to 330 bar, it would have produced around 252 tons of thrust, 12% more than its Raptor 1 predecessor. Additionally, according to the latest upgrade of Starship, Musk said that 33 Raptor 2 engines could ultimately be installed on Super Heavy. And honestly, I'm not too surprised by this. Musk himself once mentioned this matter before. Instead, I am extremely interested in the development of SpaceX on Starship. The goal of installing Raptors on Super Heavy was initially only 28 units, later increased to 29, then 32, and now will increase to 33 units in the future. That's pretty dang impressive, right? As he tweeted before, all Raptors on the booster, whether fixed or gimbling, would be the same. 33 times 230 gets around 7,600 tons, of thrust at a thrust to weight ratio of approximately 1.5. This is more than twice that of the current record holder, NASA's famous Saturn V moon rocket. Besides, for a large rocket with liquid propulsion only, a thrust to weight ratio greater than 1.5 is very respectable and improves acceleration off the launch pad, reduces gravity loss, 
in the first few minutes of ascent and thus boosts overall efficiency. This would help the rocket perform better as it would have more power to propel itself and its cargo, the starship above it. Especially the gimbal range on these will be 13 degrees, that's more than the space shuttle main engine, which means the most gimbal range of any rocket engine. Furthermore, SpaceX will also add three more vacuum-optimized engines to Starship's six planned Raptors, leaving the ships with six Raptor vacuum engines and three sea-level optimized engines, the same variant on Super Heavy. Without any shadow of a doubt, it is truly a big challenge for Musk's team. Musk previously said that SpaceX has yet to decide if Raptor Vacuum will be commonized with Raptor 2, boosting its thrust or if greater efficiency will be pursued instead. Regardless, even with 6 200-ton thrust RVACs and 3 Raptor 2s, Starship will produce upwards of 2,000 tons of thrust in vacuum, creating an upper stage with almost as much thrust as Falcon Heavy and a fully fueled thrust-to-weight ratio of around 1.7 even better than Super Heavy. Moreover, there will be no changes to the ship to accommodate this. The ship is just begging for three more vacuum engines to be added. Tanks will stretch for more propellant load, Musk said, which is awesome. Some believe that it will be designed with six Raptor vacuums in the outer ring, three Raptors sea level will be wrapped inside. But it's unclear when SpaceX will do this upgrade, but the earliest will be Booster 8 and Ship 23, so let's wait and see. According to Musk, there is a long way to go to perfect it. In the follow-up tweet, Musk said that the company still plans to use Booster 4 to propel Starship 20 to orbit during the first orbital flight test. Ship 20 passed the static fire test with all six Raptors, the first time in the history of Starbase at the end of October. Along with that, Booster 4 also just completed three consecutive cryogenic proof tests in recent days. The next step could go for wet dress rehearsal, then pre-burner and static fire. In short, all is going well. With this progress, that historic launch could occur following Musk's timeline. January or February of next year, as long as the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration wraps up its environmental review of Starship's orbital launch site in South Texas by the end of the year with a positive outcome for SpaceX. We're really looking forward to this landmark mission being launched as soon as possible, because as Musk concluded, Starship is really next levels. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And don't forget to tell us what you thought about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. And as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I would like to wish you a Merry Christmas and hope to see you again next time.